Hey garden friends, how are you guys doing today? We are in the garden house again and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about using the winter sowing method to sow more tender annuals and perennials. Now, a lot of you are familiar with the winter sowing method of getting seeds started. And if you're not, I will link uh, in the description box below my winter sowing blog posts and videos so you can see how it's done. But this is about more tender annuals and perennials that normally would be started indoors under lights and in warmer conditions. And I show you how easy you can do it. If you don't have light racks, if you want to get an early start, but you don't have any kind of things like that, you can do this. Uh, I was in a winter sewing forum and, and one gal was saying how you can't do um, tender annuals and perennials this way. And I was like, yeah, you can, because I've done it. But I didn't dispute anything there. It's just not the place. Anyway, so how I do it is I use the typical winter sewing con uh, containers. This, I use the milk jugs because I can get as many as I want for my sister. And um, I poke the holes in the bottom. I slice it all the way around so it has a hinge. And then I duct tape it closed. I like the duct tape because it holds better for me than packaging tape. Um, but many have used packaging tape successfully, so give it a whirl. Then you put your potting soil or your seed starting mix in here, and then you plant your seeds. This happens to be San Marzano tomatoes. And look, they're growing. I did this on March 10th. And how I did it was I would Put this out on my deck. It was real easy from inside my house. Uh, in the sun during the day when the temperatures were 50 or above. Uh, and just leave them out until, you know, the sun went behind the trees or what have you. And then I would bring it back in the house. So it had a few hours out in the sun. And this acts like a mini greenhouse. Heats up and it does great. At night I would bring it in the house and it would stay warm. So... Um, on days that was dark and cold, I did not put them outside at all because it just wouldn't heat up. But um, there was plenty of sunny days for us. We didn't have much of a winter. So, and you know what, you don't have to start as early as I did. You could, if you're not having the sunny days in March, um, wait until April. You'll still get a head start. Tomatoes grow very, very fast. You can also start other things. You can start zinnias. Last year I did petunias. Um, whatever you can think of that is more tender that you wouldn't normally start until it's warmed up. You can do it this way. As long as you bring them in when it gets too cold, the amount of time they have out in the sun will work. And then you'll have plenty of seedlings to get started. Now these can stay in here as long as I feed them uh, for a bit longer and I can continue to put them in and out. Now we are having a very odd April. Um, excuse my chickens, they've laid an egg again. Um, we, this week, we're going to get into the 80s during the week. That is unheard of in the mountains of California. Um, but then next week, it, we're going to barely get into the 50s and our nighttime temperatures are going to get down into the 30s. This week, they're only going to, they're going to get down into the 50s, which, you know, that's great. I could have put tomatoes out if I can consistently count on that, but I can't until after the third weekend in May. And even though I'm a zone eight... We have a shorter growing season here in the mountains and our usual last frost date is the third weekend in May. Now there's a lot of people in lower growing zones that their last frost date is in April and some even in zone eight is in March, but that's not here. So that's why you can't rely on zoning alone. There's so much more to consider and zoning really only pertains to perennials annuals it doesn't matter because you're only growing them over the summer and zoning tells you what perennials will overwinter for you so for annuals you want to know what kind of what your last frost date is and your first frost date that's all you need to know in planting annuals especially tender annuals um, now these are my pansies 
that I did my um, root bound, how to plant root bound plants, the ones you get out of six packs. And this is, I did that about a week ago. And look how great they're doing. These were the ones that were rip bound. I just ripped off the bottoms and cut down the sides and look at them now. And what I had out here was, I had soaked some in my organic rev, which is a growth stimulant. And this is one that I had soaked in the rev. And this is the one that didn't get soaked. And you can see the difference in them. Um, this one's gotten taller and the blooms are bigger and they're just doing gorgeous, just gorgeous. So anyways, you can go back and watch both the Organic Rev, which is my garden chat uh, video and my winter sewing video and the um, root bound video. So if you've tried growing something in winter sewing containers or what is typically considered winter sewing containers, let me know. I would love to try just about anything. I'm gonna do some zinnias next um, because I can't plant them out in the garden yet, but I would like to get some started a little early. And I may use um, what I call a propagating box and that is a whole video until itself. So stay tuned and I hope you will come and visit me in the next video. All right, I'll see ya, bye.